Definitive Treatment of Pelvic Ring Injuries. This is from the OTA Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series Version 5. Slides are by Dr. Gerard Allen and I'm Sakib Rahman narrating. So the objectives uh, in this lecture is uh, are the following to describe classification systems uh, with regard to stability and treatment. So we're going to focus a little bit more on uh, tile classification uh, rather than in the video we did on acute management of pelvic ring injuries where we talked a little bit more about young Burgess classification. I want you to be able to define classically operative and non-operative pelvic ring injuries and be aware of some of the controversy uh, in determining proper management. Uh, be able to explain treatment strategies both for the posterior ring and then the anterior ring, a little bit about outcomes. So treatment depends entirely on the stability of the pelvic ring uh, for the most part, but what is stability? And we talked a lot about hemodynamic stability in the acute management um, lecture, but we're going to talk a little bit more about mechanical stability. So pelvic stability is the ability to withstand physiologic loads. Uh, loads from the trunk uh, are distributed from the lumbar spine through the posterior pelvic ring to bilateral acetabulae. So stability is therefore related to the degree of posterior ring injuries because that is what links the lower extremities to the um, to the axial skeleton. So posterior pelvic stability is analogous to a suspension bridge with the posterior sacroiliac ligaments forming the cables and then the posterior ilium and sacrum acting as towers shown here on this sort of upside down axial view to kind of um, describe that um, image. So axially stable fractures um, and want you to refer both to the acute management uh, lecture as well as one of the previous lectures on radiographic evaluation and classification. So tile type A fractures uh, are rotationally and vertically stable. So these are inherently stable in terms of the posterior pelvic ring, as you can see in all these types shown below. So these are generally treated non-operatively. Now, stability doesn't always equal non-operative treatment. Uh, if you're a polytraumatized patient with perhaps very severe, extreme, uh, even extra-articular iliac wing fracture, displacement, um, patient with pain that severely limits mobilization or just non-operative treatment has failed, you may have to consider operative management. But most of the time, we're looking to determine stability as an indication uh, to treat surgically or not. So tile type B, or AOTA 61B, are rotationally unstable but vertically stable. So they have an incomplete posterior pelvic ring injury. A little bit of controversy here. Uh, many of these can be treated non-operatively, but a lot are treated operatively as well. So um, here you can see in the reference shown below, um, that uh, there are several factors that uh, can help to um, describe instability, fractures that can lead to late displacement, complete sacral fractures as opposed to just an impaction injury, bilateral rami fractures, um, as shown in the table um, over here. So when in doubt, obtain more data, right? So uh, Dr. Saji has uh, talked about the exam under anesthesia or dynamic fluoroscopic exam under anesthesia. Uh, there's the uh, reference below where you can see there are multiple views you can get uh, to determine instability. And uh, what they described was that even when you have an APC1 injury, um, there was more displacement at the time of impact and many of these were found to be occult APC2 injuries and were treated surgically. Similarly, LC1 injuries, uh, a portion of them were found to be unstable on stress exam and therefore were treated with surgical fixation. Um, so this is something that um, clearly, if you do stress views, you can uncover additional instability. Uh, what we haven't definitively uh, determined yet is whether that leads to uh, improved outcomes um, when you treat uh, uh, dynamically unstable um, injuries that appear uh, otherwise stable on static views. 
Uh, so to help you out some more, go over to otaonline.org and uh, get access to the video library. And you can see uh, the um, video here on exam under anesthesia. Uh, so you can also get um, flamingo views for anterior, uh, like APC1 type injuries, where you get sting single stance views and try to determine if there is uh, any instability um, with uh, with doing that, like vertical or rotational instability. And some patients, you will find that. Uh, other things to look for are L5 transverse process fractures, uh, avulsion fracture to the ischial spine. Uh, on the right, you can see um, with, uh, with stress here and without stress here. And you can see how with stress, there's overriding. And what you're doing is you're sort of applying a lateral to medial directed force and you can see how this pubic ramus fracture um, shortens and the obturator ring shortens compared to the left. So um, many of the um, rotationally unstable injuries uh, as shown below uh, are often treated uh, operatively. Um, so what about tile type C? These are the vertically unstable injuries. So these are rotationally and vertically unstable. So tile type C uh, is when the you have a complete injury posteriorly. Now that could be a fracture. That could be a complete ligament injury involving the um, anterior and posterior sacroiliac ligaments, for example. Um, so the ultimate treatment is dependent on things like fracture displacement, physiologic status of the patient, of the patient concurrent injuries. Uh, so that may preclude certain operative positions. You may not be able to go prone or lateral, uh, and you may have to treat differently because of that. Uh, angiographic embolization. If you have non-selective um, iliac artery embolization, that may preclude certain surgical approaches, and you may need to consider more percutaneous approaches or approaches from the other side of the pelvis. Um, prior abdominal surgeries uh, may make certain approaches potentially less desirable. And then, of course, the knowledge and comfort level of the operative surgeon. Um, other things to consider, available operative interventions exist in a spectrum of invasiveness. We talked about percutaneous methods. We've talked about you know, a little bit about open techniques. We're going to get more into that um, in the second and third um, videos of this slide deck. Um, but um, there is you know, quite a spectrum of ways you can intervene. Careful preoperative planning is essential. Use all imaging modalities available. Um, if you have the ability to get 3D CT um, rendering, I would recommend that as well. And the surgeon still have the ability to alter the preoperative plan if you feel that you chose a, non -in a less invasive treatment and you're not getting the reduction you like. So let's uh, pause here, and we're going to talk in the next video about posterior pelvis reduction and fixation methods. Thanks.